In today's game, we see the great Bobby Fischer place his pieces absolutely perfectly, every one of them to the maximum activity against Grandmaster Jan Donner. This game was played in 1966 in Santa Monica at the Piatagorsky Cup. Hope I'm pronouncing that word correctly, that name correctly. Um, and not only does Fisher place his pieces perfectly, but Donner tempts fate a little bit by making one pawn move too many. He tries to grab too much space, and that gets him in trouble. Donner has white, Fisher has black. Let us jump right in. D4, knight f6, c4, g6. We see Fisher sticking with his uh, King's Indian defense. And white plays g3, already fine kettoing. The idea is that he wants to create a little safe house over here with the knight, the bishop, castle, and not be attacked in the King's Indian the way so many players are, and just maintain a fluid center. Safe king and fluid center. Bishop g7, bishop g2, castles. Knight c3, d6. Fisher prepares the c5 or e5 push to get his share of the center. Knight to f3. Here popular these days is uh, c5, attacking uh, the d4 square that way. But Fisher plays the more traditional knight b to d7. The idea, of course, is to play e7, e5. And just that's the traditional main King's Indian move. Play e5 and attack d4. Castles and e5. Fisher chooses the classical approach. So Donner plays e4, and he has what he wanted, right? He has a safe king, and he has a fluid center. He doesn't want to advance this pawn. He'd rather not advance that pawn. Uh, he wants to keep this center fluid so it can control key squares in black's position. Fisher plays c6. That keeps a knight out of d5 and also allows the queen potentially to develop at b6 or a5. And here, rook to b1. Very ambitious from Donner. He places his rook on b1 to support the advance of this b-pawn and gain even more space on the queen side. Fisher plays a6. He's preparing his counterattack. He's going to potentially counterattack on the queen side by playing b5 and going after this weak c4 square. One of the downsides of fine kettoing this light squared bishop is that it can leave this c4 pawn underdefended, and Fisher wants to take advantage of that. Donner goes ahead with b4 immediately, perhaps rook to e1. Defending that e4 pawn was a, a safer choice, but he plays b4. Fisher goes ahead and takes in the center, opening up and lengthening this diagonal for his dark squared bishop. Knight takes d4. White does have space as compensation, of course. Rook to e8. Fisher attacks the e4 pawn a second time. e4 is a sensitive square uh, and pawn for the white pieces, so he's putting pressure on it. White plays h3, a very normal idea in these you know, fine keto lines. Basically, he wants to keep a knight out of g4 or maybe even a bishop out of g4, but he just wants to control that g4 square. Fisher plays knight to e5, attacking the undefended c4 pawn. Not only is it an undefended pawn, but that square in and of itself is also strong, even if the pawn were not on that square. Queen to e2. He has to defend the c4 pawn. He plays his queen to e2, which does that. However, it does place his queen opposite Fisher's rook. So there could be some tactics along the e-file if white is not careful. Fisher goes ahead with his plan. b5, attacking the c4 pawn and gaining that c4 square for this knight on e5, where it will be very well placed. White takes. Now here, Fisher could take with the a-pawn. That's possible. Uh, and if uh, Donner tries to eject his knight with f4, queen to b6, counterattacking and pinning this knight, uh, bishop e3, knight c4. That would uh, be effective. But Fisher goes ahead and he takes with the c-pawn with a very interesting plan. He wants to play the bishop to b7 to put more pressure on e4, then double on the c-file with the rook at c8, the queen at c7, and play this, place this knight on this weak c4 square. Rook to d1 from Donner, placing his rook opposite Fisher's queen, and also some pressure on this weak d5 square and d6 pawn. Fisher just continues with his plan. Bishop to b7, aiming at the e4 pawn. And here, uh, Donner plays f4, and that may be one pawn move too many. Perhaps bishop to g5 was a little bit uh, better here, getting that last minor piece developed, and maybe the knight can hop into d5, and he can reduce some of the pressure Fisher has on his position. Uh, but f4 makes his king a little vulnerable, and this dark square diagonal as well. Uh, and of course, it just pushes Fisher's knight exactly where it already wanted to go, right? The c4 square. We know that's where he was aiming, so that's where he goes. 
Um, and he has a threat already. He's threatening to take on e4 with the knight because of that pin. He would actually he would recoup the piece on d5 and have a much better position here. So Donner has to do something about the threat of just capturing on e4. So he plays the queen to d3, stepping out of that pin, but leaving the queen defending the pawn. So for the moment, e4 is covered. So Fisher just plays rook to c8. And now I want, just, just look at how beautiful Fisher's pieces are. Each rook, one rook is on the half open file, the other rook is on the open file. The bishops are on nice long diagonals with plenty of activity. The knight at c4 is perfectly placed, and the knight on f6 is putting pressure on the most vulnerable point in white's position. And a beautiful, efficient distribution of the black pieces. Very, very impressive. King to h2 from white. The king is a little vulnerable on this diagonal right here, so he wants to get it out of the way. Uh, but now queen to c7. Fisher completes his plan. All his pieces are now perfectly placed with pressure down the c file. And he's got to do something about this knight on c3, which uh, if he were to move this knight on c4, black could take the knight on c3. So there are tactical threats down that file. So Donner plays rook to b3 to defend that knight. But that's a very inefficient place for the rook. You, you know, the rook has got a very low duty to have to defend that knight, but yet the pressure has caused this to happen. Now Fisher changes his target. He moves to the e4 pawn, uh, really apply the pressure and try to win it, and he shifts that, plans to shift that rook at c8 over to e8 to double on that file. Rook to e1, Donner also shifts to defend that pawn. Rook c to e8. So the pressure is really building. Fisher has four pieces attacking e4. White has four pieces defending e4. So how does he unravel? How does White survive this? Well, Donner plays knight to c2. And uh, it moves off this long diagonal where this bishop was putting pressure on that square. Um, his idea is to play the knight to e3 and exchange off Fisher's very well-placed knight on c4 to reduce that pressure. Fisher plays queen to c8. The idea is to move the queen to a8 to add another attacker to the e4 pawn so black wouldn't be able to defend. He would have uh, too many attackers on that square. So Donner plays knight to e3, trying to get this knight on c4 off of the board. Fisher goes ahead and obliges him. He takes the knight on e3. Well, why would he do that? He does that because white has no good way of recapturing that knight. If he takes with the bishop, he blocks the rook's defense of the e4 pawn, and he can just take it, right? There's nothing, the rook isn't defending it anymore, so that pawn would just fall. If he takes with the queen, he renews this pin down the e-file that has been such a perpetual problem for him, and again, Fisher can take. After knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, just rook takes e4. He doesn't even have to worry about the pin, he can just take because the queen is in front, and he immediately attack, attacks uh, the queen. So, Donner goes ahead and takes with the rook. But that doesn't work either. The problem is this bishop at c1 is now completely undefended, and Fisher takes advantage of that by taking on e4 anyway. Donner recaptures with the bishop, bishop takes e4, and again, if he takes with the knight, then queen takes bishop, and white has a crushing position. Because this knight is pinned. If the knight moves, he would, re, he would take the, uh, the rook on, on e3. Uh, so if he tries rook to b1 to kick the queen and add another defender, Fisher could just play a queen to c4, attacking the knight again. After queens come off, there's nothing he can do. e5, and the knight falls. Notice the knight f6 check trick does not work because after the bishop takes, it's defending the rook. And uh, so that would, be, that would be it. So Donner, seeing this, decides to go ahead and play queen to d6 to get what he can from the position. And here, by the way, I just want to show you one move that computers showed me. It's an amazing move, actually. <laughs> Fisher did not play it. But when you see it, it's kind of makes you, it boggles your mind. And that's this beautiful move, uh, bishop to g2. Just leaving the bishop hanging on this square but if he takes, then black would take the rook, and, uh, and that would not work. So king g2, rook takes e3, bishop takes, 
and uh, he's attacking the knight three times, the rook, the queen, and the bishop. And if the knight moves counterattacking the rook, then just queen to a8 check will lead to a, a quick catastrophe for the white king. Um, and if he plays rook takes e7, then queen takes on h3. And very quickly, he would be mated. So that was a move I wanted to share with you, because when I saw it, I, my jaw dropped. Uh, but Fisher plays an another good move. Uh, rook to d7, attacking the queen. And now look at this armada of heavy pieces <laughs> just <laughs> marching up the board. You do not want to be white in this position. He plays queen to c5 to try to get the queens off the board. But then Fisher plays rook to c7, attacking the queen and aiming at this uh, loose knight on c3. So Donner realizes the kind of trouble he's in. He tries to get something for his queen. He goes ahead and takes the bishop. Rook takes queen. Knight takes rook. So he's gotten a, a rook and minor piece for the queen. But after Fisher's next move, bishop to d4, white resigned. And uh, his position is completely falling apart. For example, after rook takes e8, queen takes, the threat of queen to e2 check just leads to the total destruction of White's position and probably a quick mate. But uh, the looseness of the of these pieces and pawns uh, mean that it's over for for White. And Donner resigned in this position. A beautiful game from Fisher, really taking advantage of White's overreaching in terms of gaining space with his pawns. Fisher found the weak points, developed his pieces perfectly, and executed his plan. Thank you for joining us at Chess Talk. See you again soon.